Brian's natural hair colour, his height and the length of his legs are partly determined by his genes. But the very underpinnings of his behaviour, the neurology of his brain, might also have an inherited component. My theory is I was an addict or an alcoholic before I even had a drink. This is the test that Anne has been dreading most. It involves giving blood, but she can't stand needles. Take 30 seconds. Blood, like every other cell in our body, contains a full set of genes. They pass from our parents, our grandparents, back through our family line. OK, small needle now. Because you've got good veins, so don't worry. Okay. For some families, genetic diseases like haemophilia come right. literally in the blood. Right, if you count up to about 30, we should be finished. You're doing very well. You feel OK? That's flowing nicely. Nearly finished. There's no question of a direct link between genes and drink. But there could be something more subtle going on. Wasn't. All right, finished. Yeah. Shall I just press on that? Do you like to lie down? Brothers and sisters are a lie good down, case for scientific study. For Brian and Anne's blood samples, it's Destination USA. A San Francisco based group of scientists has lined up a large number of potential suspect genes. In the laboratory, they put Brian and Anne's blood samples through a regime of diluting and spinning. The technique will reveal the genetic blueprint for each of the siblings. This white strand is Anne's DNA. Brian and Anne have half of their DNA in common. And they have half their DNA in common because they each got half their DNA from their parents, each of their parents. And, but they got different halves of their DNA from their parents. So if we look at a chromosome location where they both inherited the same bits of DNA from their parents, We'd think that's an unlikely location for the gene that causes Brian to be an alcoholic and Anne not to be. So this is from the sibling pair we've been talking about? Yes. So this came from one chromosome, this came from the other, and it looks like they've inherited the same piece of DNA from both of their parents. Can we look at another marker? Sure. Oh, so in this case you can see that they've inherited a different chromosome for at least one of their chromosomes in this case, and it looks like they have one in common here. This may have been from uh, the, same, the same piece from the same parent, or it's possible that uh, the parents just both happen to have this size fragment. This data looks great. But to figure out what this DNA might actually be doing, the scientists need to match it up against actual behavior. Okay, and the first time you ever drank alcohol in your life, when was that? <laughs> to be absolutely honest, I, I, I wouldn't know when I took my first drink. I'm, I probably wouldn't remember it anyway because I'd have got drunk. It's it's perfectly fine to estimate. I was probably pretty young, 16, 17. Um, a tolerance towards alcohol would have been, you know, very little or, or none at all. Uh, Simple traits like age of onset could correlate with certain stretches of DNA. <clears throat> so what percentage of your waking hours? The scientists are throwing a battery of the most powerful and up-to-date technology at the problem. Even so, it's a tough one. Unlike single gene disorders, such as haemophilia, they haven't even established what the genes are meant to code for. It's not clear what it is about alcoholism that's inherited. And so it may be that what's inherited in alcoholism is craving, the development of craving, or the learning process to become addicted, or the susceptibility to withdrawal. We don't know the answer to that, 
in advance. And so what we're doing is we're collecting as much data as we can so that we can divide our sample in ways that we can figure out what, in fact, is inherited. Time for more questions. The human genetics of complex disorder like alcoholism and high blood pressure and asthma, we're expecting many genes to be involved. And in fact, these genes may not have simple patterns of how they produce disease. It may be, for instance, that a gene that predisposes to alcohol, alcoholism also predisposes to one to have, say, a, a, a sense of adventure and novelty seeking. I do like the adrenaline rush of uh, certain things. You know, I like excitement. Sometimes I like living dangerously as well. So the genes that are involved won't necessarily be a simple gene that produces alcoholism, but it may produce a complex set of behaviors that are interrelated based on underlying chemistry. Brian has chosen to put the qualities that were once part of his addiction to positive uses. Whatever his genes say, he's not doomed to be an alcoholic. His genes are like a template, but he has some control over how it's used. Thank you.